Welcome everybody. In today's video, we will cover 50 high yield rapid review questions for dermatology exam. These are the high yield questions you can expect to see during your exam. The first one is as important as the last one. These questions will improve your testing score. So let's begin. Question number one. A small domed papules with umbilicated centers should make you think. And here's a picture. You can see the umbilicated center. And these are your molluscum contagiosum. The treatment is do nothing. It's really self-limiting. So if that's another question, it's just, you know, it's self-limiting. Question number two. What is the most common type of skin cancer? Is it basal cell, squamous cell, is it melanoma, or Merkel cell? So the most common type of skin cancer is basal cell carcinoma. Number three, most common presentation of eczema. It is scratching and prurious, rash, or rather like itching. Most common type of basal cell carcinoma, and that would be nodular basal cell carcinoma. They can give you different choices in uh, stem, or they can give you different choices in the uh, answers. So knowing that nodular is the most common type will always get you the right answer. And what also helped me during the didactic year is to create little stories, mnemonics, anything that helped me remember information so I can recall it faster later. It was super helpful. And when it comes to basal cell carcinoma, I just think of those little naughty things you can have in your car, like little nod heads. So I say basal cell carcinoma likes to nod. So nod for nodular. So if I think of basal cell carcinoma, I just imagine that little nodding head, and I just know the nodular is the most common type. Alright guys, so all of these questions you're going to find in my book, uh, PSI Buddy for Adactic Care. There's like 4,000 questions just like this. You can scan a code, uh, check it out. It will significantly help you with the didactic care, help you save time when you're studying, and you can spend that time with your loved ones and doing things that you love to do. Also, for those of you that already subscribed, thank you very much. And for those of you that haven't, take a look around. I made a, a video like this for every class of the didactic, and I made a video for every EOR. So do check those out as well. And for those of you, again, that already subscribed, thank you very much for helping me grow this channel. All right, let's continue. So most common type of melanoma. So the most common type of melanoma is superficial spreading. And the way I remember this, I would just say melanoma is a super spreader. So just like the basal cell carcinoma, I know it's nodular, it likes to nod, and melanoma likes to spread. So super spreader, melanoma, superficial spreading. Question number six. What if the question stem, they tell you this is a melanoma case in Asians and African Americans, and they're going to ask you what is the most common type of melanoma in this patient population? And in that case, it's acral lentiginous. And the way I remember this is Asians and African Americans, they both start with the letter A, so it's acral. So just look for letter A in the answers if you cannot remember the whole word. Sometimes it's really difficult to remember these dermatology terms. It feels like a language on its own. So sometimes I just remember the first letter. And in this case, I have they're talking about Asians, African Americans, starts with A. I look for A crawl, and usually you will just recognize it in your answer, uh, and you'll be fine. Question number seven. With melanoma presentation, you should be thinking about A, B, C, D. And this is asymmetry, border irregularity, color changes, and diameter. If it's greater than 6 millimeters, you should be paying attention to that. Uh, it should be indicative of melanoma. So again, asymmetric borders, irregular borders, different colors throughout the melanoma and diameter. Open comedones are what? Open comedones are blackheads and closed are whiteheads. Open, blackheads, closed, whiteheads. Number nine, inflammation of pilosebaceous unit should make you think of acne, acne vulgaris. So just if they talk about inflammation of the pilosebaceous unit, acne vulgaris. Number ten, the itch that rashes should make you think of atopic dermatitis. So they're going to tell you the patient comes in, they got this rash and it's super itchy and on top of your differential should be atopic dermatitis. Most common location of eczema in infants. So they're going to give you a stem with the pediatric patient, they're going to tell you the patient has eczema or they tell you has a rash that is itchy and they're going to tell you the most common location is, they're going to list different uh, 
locations, but you should know that for kids, the most common location of eczema is face and extensor surfaces. Extensor surfaces being the most common. How about in adults? So the most common location of eczema in adults is flexor surfaces. So for kids, that would be the inside of the elbow. For adults, it would be the outside of the elbow, most likely. All right, so continue. Number 13, tapioca pudding vesicles should make you think of what? And this is a picture of dyshydrotic dermatitis. So these tapioca pudding vesicles will be somewhere in the stem, and that should instantly make you think of dyshydrotic dermatitis. Oval coin shape weeping patches are numbular dermatitis. Numbular, I just think of coin, numismatics. Uh, Namular, coin, oval coin shape, patches, namular, dermatitis. What are the five P's of leech and planus? Those are purple, papular, pruritus, polygonal, and planar. So if you see several P's in the description of the lesion, you should be thinking about leech and planus. Herald patch should make you think of what? So in this picture, you can see the herald patch that salmon oval shaped lesion and that is pityriasis rosea. So herald patch, think pityriasis rosea. Pityriasis rosea will have what pattern of distribution? And that would be the Christmas tree pattern as you can see on this picture. So they're gonna either show you a picture, they're gonna tell you the rash kinda looks like a Christmas tree in appearance and that should also make you think of pityriasis rosea. Pityriasis is uh, such a hard word to say. Pityriasis rosea, a lesion's description. So this will be salmon colored, oval round papules with a white circular scaling, very itchy. So if you see that salmon color, it is oval, and it has a white circular scaling, and it's itchy, you should be thinking of herald patch, pityriasis rosea. All right, guys, let's continue. And what would be the treatment for pityriasis rosea? And that is self-limiting, so none is needed. So they can list different ointments, they can list different pills, whatever. Uh, but the answer is that it's none is needed, it is self-limiting. Number 20, what is derrier sign? And that is a localized urticaria appearing where the skin is rubbed. So when somebody runs their finger along their skin, and in a second you can just see the red marking over the fingernail was ran through and that is their ear sign. All right. Target lesions should make you think of, so if you see like on this picture, there's multiple lesions, they look like targets, uh, practice targets. So target lesions should make you think of erythema multiforme. And the way I remember this is multiple targets, multi targets, multiple, so multiforme. I think of multiforme, multi, multiple lesions, target lesions, and I just remember multiple targets. Erythema multiforme lesions description. So this would be a dusty violet red purpuric macular vesicles on a bullet in the center. So you can see that center is well marked. Surrounded by pale hematis rim and a peripheral red halo. So you can see the red halo all around and then the center is marked with like a red dot pretty much. So dusty violet red in the center and red halo around. Erythema multiform, uh, multi-targets. Steven Johnson's syndrome versus TEN percentage of the skin involved. SGS versus TEN percentage of the skin. So they can give you different percentages of the skin involved and they ask you what is this most likely and knowing that TEN is greater than 30% and SJS is less than 10. And the easiest way for me to remember this, I would just say 10 is 30 plus. New 10 is 30, 10 is 30 plus. So if I see 30 plus, I just think 10. Less than 10, SJS. Continuing with the number 24, most common bug causing impedigo, and that would be Steph aureus. So you can see that honey color crust lesion, it's usually around the nose and the mouth, and that would be impedigo, Steph aureus. 
Number 25, what is the treatment for lice? So the lice treatment is permetrin, 1% shampoo, wash, clothing, and bedding. A licensed KB should get permit to park it on a skin. Permit, permetrin. That's the way I remembered it. I never forgot it. So permetrin sounds like permit. And I say for lice and for scabies, if they want to be on a skin, they need a permit. You treat it with permetrin. Scabies treatment, again, permetrin, but in this case, it's 5% cream. So for lice, it's a 1% shampoo. And for scabies, it's 5% cream. From neck down, wash it off after 8 to 14 hours. Repeat it in one week. So that could be another part of the question. They can actually tell you you're going to use permethrin 5% cream, but they're going to ask you how often should be repeated, and you say repeat in one week. And they may also ask you, you should be washing it off after how long, and the answer in that case would be 8 to 14 hours. <laughs> what is the only childhood viral exanthem that starts on a trunk and spreads to the face? Because most all of the other ones will start on the face and they may be spreading down, but in this case, we got a viral exanthem that starts on a trunk and spreads to the face, and that would be Rosiola, sixth disease. And the way I just remember this, I was just imagine a rose on a trunk. So if they say it starts on a trunk, I just say, oh, trunk, there's a rose on a trunk. You can imagine like a picture of the rose, you can imagine a tattooed tattoo showing the rose, whatever works for you. So that rose will make me think of Rosiola. So Rosiola, sixth disease, Rose in a trunk, starts in a trunk, and spreads upwards. Roseola is caused by which HHV? And that would be 6th and 7th. Most common virus causing head, foot, mouth disease. And that would be Coxsackie A virus. Coxsackie A virus is the most common virus causing head, foot, mouth disease. What are the three C's of measles, rubiola? And that would be cough, corsi, and conjunctivitis. Cough, corsi, and conjunctivitis are three C's of measles. Measles rash starts where? Well, it starts at the hairline and spreads down. And usually with measles, there'll always be a fever uh, concurrent with the rash. So that's like one of the giveaways that you're dealing with the measles. When a kid comes in, they got that uh, rash that started a hairline and spreading down, but they also got the fever. So if you see in a question stem fever plus rash, you should be thinking measles. How long does a measles rash last? Measles rash will last seven days. So in a stem, they're going to tell you this is the rash that started a hairline, spreading down, kids got fever, and they're going to tell you this rash usually lasts how long? And they're going to tell you like three days, five days, seven days, two weeks. But the answer is seven days. How about if we talk about German measles? So German measles will last three days. Erythema infectiosum, fifth disease, is, co is caused by which virus? Fifth disease is caused by parvovirus B19. And the easiest way for me to remember this was, I would just say 5B19. 5B19. So if you talk about viruses, you always classify with these numbers, and I'll just remember 5B19, and I'll say fifth disease, 5B19. Erythema infectiosum buzzwords. So this will be a slept cheek, a lacy reticular rash on extremities that spares palms and soles. So if you see a kid with a slapped cheek, you should be thinking about fifth disease. 5B19. This rash spares vermilion borders, and this will be perioral dermatitis. So if you see a rash that is sparing vermilion borders in a stem or in a picture, you should be thinking about perioral dermatitis. Perioral dermatitis treatment. When it comes to the treatment of perioral dermatitis, it will be topical metronidazole or erythromycin. Inflammation of one or both corners of the mouth should make you think of what? Well, if you see inflammation of the corner of the mouth, that should make you, not mouth, mouth, uh, that should make you think of uh, angular chalitis. So you can see in the picture here, there's a cold sore, but if you see in the corner of the mouth, that is an angular 
chiliitis. See, all these words are so hard to pronounce. Edmatis rash with distinct satellite lesions should make you think of what? And this would be the yeast diaper candida. Question number 40. When it comes to the yeast diaper candida, what is the treatment? So the question can tell you the patient has yeast diaper candida from the stem with those distinct satellite lesions and they may ask you what is the treatment uh, for this patient and the answer is clotromycin ointment. So satellite lesions are treated with clotromizole ointment. Atopical dermatitis is likely dysfunction of which protein in the epidermis? Atopic dermatitis is dysfunction of the filigree protein. Cradle cap is also known as what? Cradle cap is also known as seborrheic dermatitis. Seborrheic dermatitis treatment. So this will be the selenium sulfide. Ketoconazole shampoo or cream. So selenium sulfide, ketoconazole shampoo or cream. Pityriasis rosea can mimic what other disease? So it can mimic syphilis. So do PRP test if the patient is sexually active. 45. Male pattern baldness is also known as androgenic alopecia. Small red spots in the buccal mucosa with the blue white pale centers should make you think of what? These are coplic spots. So they can tell you it's coplic spots, they can show you a picture, they're going to ask you what it's called. But if you see these small red spots in the buccal mucosa, you should be thinking about coplic spots. How about four chimer spots on a soft palate? Well, that is rubella. Sickle cell patients can get aplastic crisis from which exantum? So in a stem, they're going to tell your patient has a history of the sickle cell and they got aplastic uh, crisis and they're going to tell you which one of these exantum is the most likely cause and that would be a fifth disease, slap cheek, 5B19. Herpes zoster shingles is most contagious when? It's most contagious a day before the rash appears. So knowing different times, when it stops, when it starts, uh, it's really high yield for testing questions. So herpes zoster is most contagious when? The day before the rash appears. So they can tell you seven days before, three days before, the day before, the day after. They can play with the times as they wish, but the answer is day before the rash appears. And the last question, guys, treatment for tinea captus. And the treatment for tinea capitis is grease of olive. All right, guys, so we made it to the end. You can see these high yield questions are super helpful because they're going to ask you in a the stem. They can see them in the answers. If you know these high yield, I guarantee your scores will go high. So do check out the book. It will significantly help you with the testing. I just wish I had something like this when I was in PA school and I would be able to spend more time with my family. But for now, go ahead and check out other videos from all the other classes. And best of luck. You guys got this and I'll see you in the next video.